Hey guys, uh, Mike Level okay? Check, check, cool. Uh, nice to see you all here. Uh, my name is Mike D'Alessio. On the internet, I go by Flavor Jones. Um, I am one of the uh, authors of No Kigiri, along with Tenderlove, who you guys may know from his internet presence. Uh, these slides are up at this permalink. If you guys want to go to it, it says bit.ly no kigiri Goroko 2013. Uh, and it's important to remember that this presentation is both valid and well-formed. All right. Uh, I work for Pivotal Labs. Woo! Um, this is my internet avatar. If you guys happen to see me online, say hi. Um, let's dive right in. Uh, Nokigiri, as of this morning, Nokigiri has been downloaded over 11 million times, almost 12 million times. Uh, that's kind of amazing, and I was really surprised by that. Uh, just for comparison, Rails is coming in at about twice that, around 24 million downloads. It's not a competition, but if you're, <laughs> if you're gonna put it into perspective as, say, recording artists, uh, Noki Yeri would be Kelly Clarkson. We've shipped around 11 million units. That's great. Rails would be Kiss. They've been around longer. Um, people have a much more emotional response to Kiss. Kelly Clarkson's kind of adult contemporary. It's cool. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but how did that happen, right? Nokigiri is just this little utility library. I didn't think it was going to be anything special when I started. I'll tell you, we're going to go into the history of this a little bit. Um, but first, uh, etymology. People ask all the time what Nokigiri means. I'll tell you. Uh, it's a saw. It's a Japanese word for a saw, you know, for cutting trees, you know, forests of XML. It's a pun. Think about it. You'll, you'll get it later tonight on the boat. Um, let's talk about origins. Originally, this, uh, the project came about in 2008. So let's set the stage a little bit. What happened in 2008? This is Rails 2.1 and Ruby 1.8.7 were released for the first time. Slumdog Millionaire was out there. Oil hit $100 a barrel. Awesome. Uh, New York special note, uh, Elliot Spitzer resigned in disgrace. Some of you may remember that. Um, so this is, this is kind of the, the time we're talking about. Um, on September 9th of that year, I had a very interesting email conversation with Tenderlove who at this point in time really didn't know who I was. I had sent a couple of pull requests to mechanize. Uh, and this is the, uh, hang on, make it a little bigger. So on top is, uh, is me. Hey, you're working on a libxml wrapper, right? And he goes, yes. And it's going to be better than hpercot for handling broken HTML. And I was like, all right, that seems like an interesting use case. I'm interested. How can I help out? And he goes, oh, I've actually started a project called Nokigiri, and we're going to use DL. So for those of you who don't know what DL is, DL was a pure Ruby library meant to call out to uh, C code. So you could call C code directly from Ruby. Um, and uh, how did that work out? I'll tell you, it was really, really slow. Um, DL was doing some really silly things around how it marshaled parameters. So we pretty much threw it out and decided we had to kind of write a C extension for this. So we're writing C code, uh, compiling it into the gem, calling libxml2 directly at this point. Um, the toughest part about doing this was really managing libxml2's memory management. Um, the, the, it, its model for handling nodes within a document was really, really hairy, and I spent probably a good two months just fixing seg faults uh, and how, how memory was handled inside libxml and then making the Ruby gem just work around that. Um, the key tools I used to, to do this were Valgrind. If you guys don't know Valgrind, it's basically an x86 emulator that will capture uh, invalid memory access. It's pretty cool. Also, perftools.rb, which is a Ruby version of Google's perftools that Aman Gupta wrapped up. Totally, totally awesome. If you guys ever have to write a C extension, first of all, I'm sorry. But second of all, these are the tools you want to use. Um, and as far as the API design on Nokigiri, we stole the best XML API we could find, which was hpercot. So for those of you who remember why and hpercot, it was this lovely little gem that really just put a great API on top of handling XML. Problem was it was a little bit buggy. Um, they had one by, off by one errors in places. Um, and it wasn't that, you know, it wasn't as fast as I wanted it to be and it wasn't totally portable and didn't really fix XML and HTML the way I wanted it to, which is kind of why we went and built Nokigiri. Uh, the first official release of Nokigiri was November of 2008. Um, this was actually the weekend of daylight savings time. Uh, and I was totally buried at work, so Aaron released it anyway. Um, just meaningless, I guess, but this is another meaningless statistic. Uh, in January 2009, we were about even between Ruby and C at this point. We had started out building a pure Ruby gem. Now it's about half and half Ruby and C. Keep an eye on those numbers. I'll bring them up in a few minutes again. Um, 
you may ask, how did the community, how did the community accept Nokagiri initially? Because Hprikot was such a well-loved gem, and Y was such a popular guy. Um, well, so there are some performance stats that were getting kicked around at the time where, oh my god, Hprikot is so much slower than regular expressions, and people were really arguing over like speed for XML, parsing libraries and stuff, right? Like I actually have a couple of links if you guys want to download the slides and take a look of like 2009 era discussions where people are just raging about whether, you know, HPRCOT or LibXML or Nokiyuri were faster, and it seems so silly in retrospect. Um, and then in August of 2009, this tweet came across the wire. Does anybody know who tweeted this? Very good, Y did, about a week and a half before he disappeared. Um, it's kind of a sad quote, I think, because this is kind of, to me, the essence of software development, right? Always kind of advancing the art, making it cleaner, making it better, making it faster, and Y seemed to think it was kind of a sad thing. Uh, that he saw his works being replaced by superior ones. Um, I don't know what to say about that. By way. Um, let's dive into JRuby real quick. Um, JRuby started to become really popular around 2009, 2010. Quick poll, who uses JRuby in production right now? Not too bad, like a dozen maybe? Okay. Um, the problem at the time was JRuby didn't support C extensions, so anybody in JRuby who wanted to use Nokagiri couldn't. Uh, so I had a dream at this point in time, right? My dream was that I could write one piece of code, one gem that would run on MRI, Rubinius, and JRuby without changing. Um, this is what I call my FFI phase, right? Like you have artists who have their sunflower phase. I had my FFI phase. Uh, so FFI is foreign function interface. This is, again, it's like DL where we started. It's a pure Ruby library for accessing native code. Uh, FFI was way better than DL, though. It was faster. Um, where is it? There we go. It was way faster than DL. Uh, it was optimized to run on all these different platforms. The shout out to here is to Wayne Meissner, who was kind of the kingpin of FFI. Uh, it's basically magic. If you actually look at the internals, I have no idea how it works. But it, but it works on JRuby. It works on Rubinius. It works on uh, MRI. It's, it's amazing. Um, I spent most of the first part of 2009 rewriting all of the C code in Ruby. This was so painful, you can't even imagine it. Um, it took over 3,000 lines of Ruby code to reproduce 4,000 lines of C code. You can get an idea of what I'm talking about here, right? This is like a one-to-one -one comparison. If you ignore where variables are being declared, it's like, oh, if this return null, if that return null. One-to-one -one comparison, right? So I'm just rewriting the C code in Ruby. It was really, really painful. Um, on the good side, hey, it worked. FFI actually worked across all these platforms. Golf clap. Uh, the, the bad part was it was what I call segfault-driven development. Um, like literally, we, we, we would try something and it would crash, and we have to figure out why it crashed, pull up the debugger, pull up Algrind, and then fix it. Um, portable string handling is really hard. The JVM is, uh, is very different in how it cleans up strings. Uh, I have two minutes left, so I'm gonna go really fast now. Uh, FFI code's not any cleaner than C. This is not the Ruby code that I fell in love with. <laughs> that, that is C code in Ruby. Uh, huge performance penalty as well. This is C and that's FFI over there. Really bad performance. And worst of all, I got harassed at conferences by people that the Google App Engine didn't, su didn't support uh, FFI. So this is really a no-win situation for me. All of these choices stink. Um, how you maintain your gems. I'm not gonna dive into this now. You should go back and take a look if you're considering making your gems use FFI to support multiple platforms. So I killed FFI. Um, I wish I had time to dive into this, but I only have like a minute left now, so I'm gonna jump ahead. I'm not gonna pause for a sip of beverage either. Uh, uh, his name isn't Linux, his name is Linus. Uh, <laughs> Portability is for people who can't write new programs. Uh, kind of the point of this is that um, there's, there are trade-offs, and when it came time to actually make it work on JRuby, I didn't know how to write a new program, but Sergio Arbeo did. This guy was a college student who spiked on this and made Nokigiri on Java work over the summer. Really, really amazing. You can say you don't believe it, but it's true. Um, meaningless statistic, uh, Nokigiri is now a Java project. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. Um, it was also way faster. That's the FFI, the big tall one, and Java is down there. Wow. Um, this also came about as part of the Ruby bounty. I'm gonna get to the real headline thing here, which is installation. Um, how much time do I have? 30 seconds, 30 seconds. awesome. Uh, so many of you have probably had Nokigiri installation problems. Who, raise your hand if you had any problems. Okay, I have a great announcement for you guys. These problems are all gonna go away as soon as I walk back to my table. Um, 
basically, what's going to happen here is uh, we are going to. <sighs> so many slides, sorry. Nokia 160 is going to be released today. It packages libxml2 and libxslt inside the gem. It'll compile and install those libraries when you install the gem. You'll yeah. never have a problem again. Yay! 